Now, when I, when I build a mix, I like to start with the drum kit. The drum kit forms the tempo, it forms the rhythm for the entire group, and so you want to get that right both in the monitors and in the mains. One of the best ways to start out with that, certainly from the standpoint of cost and the typical way most people start out, is with a three mic setup. So you have the two overheads and a kick microphone. Um, this is not necessarily the way that we would prefer. Andrew and I tend to like a, a six or seven microphone setup, but for those of you that do uh, have a cost constraint or a constraint on your channels, uh, this is a good way to start. Now, if you're going to use this technique, I do strongly recommend that you have a drum booth, a clear sonics type of a drum booth, something uh, with an isolation. So at the barn, uh, you guys uh, mic'd up with a three mic kit. Uh, take us through that. Right, well, we found this uh, great sounding drum kit. Uh, it featured a kick, uh, a snare, two toms, and then three cymbals, uh, a hi-hat, a crash, and a ride. Now, when uh, taking the minimalist approach uh, with just the three mics, uh, we're going to uh, do two overheads, like you said, a, uh, in a spaced pair configuration, and then a kick. Now, a drum kit, as we know, is multiple drums being played together to form a cohesive whole. Uh, overheads pick up the cymbals, but they can also pick up the overall sound of, uh, of all these components working together. So, when placing uh, overhead mics, we'll typically use a spaced pair. Uh, and this helps cover the full kit. Now, spaced pair works well for live drums, uh, and it keeps the, keeps the mics off of the sides uh, out of the drummer's way. We'll want to start with small diaphragm condensers. Uh, we're, we're not going to be too, uh, too close to any one drum or cymbal, uh, so condensers can capture the greatest level of detail, uh, crispness, and maybe just some of the overall air that, that comes off of the, off of the, the kit. Um, at the barn, we used a pair of E914s uh, for overhead. Uh, it's a small diaphragm condenser. Uh, it just requires a 48-volt phantom power. It's very compact, uh, lightweight, and it offers very detailed sound. Uh, so when positioning them, we'll want to position them slightly above the drummer's head uh, so we're capturing a sound very close to what he's hearing. And we want to, of course, position them so, so it's out of, out of uh, his or her way. Then we'll add a kick drum. Uh, overheads can give us a good cymbal sound and some snare and toms. However, they will not produce any, any good kick uh, sound that we're looking for. So when miking the kick, We'll definitely want to uh, start with a dynamic mic, which is optimized for low frequencies. Uh, here, we used an E602. Uh, this microphone is rugged. Uh, it, it can handle high uh, sound pressure levels. Uh, it's optimized for low frequencies as well. Now, drums are high, high sound up close, a lot of transients. So close miking pr provides the isolation needed but it often necessita necessitates dynamic mics that can handle uh, that SPL. So with the kick, we want to start about one inch from the rear uh, drum head, as we saw in that picture. Let's start in the center of uh, the drum for a nice thump. Use your, uh, use your ears for final placement. So uh, we'll want to uh, we'll wanna move it more toward the edge of that particular drum if, uh, if it sounds better there, maybe if the kick fits better in the mix, producing that tone. Um, now, many kicks uh, have a hole cut in the head, allowing you to place your mic inside of it, which might give us a little bit more of an attack sound. Our kit here that we found at the barn did not, uh, so... So we just place the E602 on center up against the drum, the drum's head. Now, let's listen to a three-mic drum set. We'll, we'll see some additional mics uh, in this clip. However, the only mics that are turned on are just the overheads that we talked about and just the single kick. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and listen. All right, so the overheads gave us a, a pretty decent balance of the cymbals, as you heard. 
Uh, and in fact, you could pick up the snare and the toms. Uh, reasonably balanced, but again, we were in a, a, a recording studio or a quiet type of an environment. Uh, and you also had good kick. I want to point out this very, very nice large diaphragm uh, dynamic microphone. It's the 602. That's the one we were using on the drums. Uh, and, and you can see how large that diaphragm is. It's fabulous. Now, some of you are probably going to ask, okay, what kind of EQ did you use? Uh, we are using no EQ. In fact, we're running them directly to the hard drive through the True Systems pre Amps. So the mics go right to the pre's, right to the hard drive, high definition recording, no EQ. So everything you hear today will be straight to the hard drive, uh, digital, and no EQ. So don't, uh, don't worry about that. Now, as we mentioned, it's a great economical way to go ahead and mic a drum set. Um, you do need to have some sort of an isolation booth to keep the rest of the sound out of those overheads. Uh, but Andrew and I both prefer six or seven drum mics, so let's go ahead and take a look at that, Andrew. Well, next, we're going to add uh, one snare and then two tom mics. Uh, snare is a very high SPL instrument, uh, and it's often hit very hard uh, to produce more crack. Uh, so we'll definitely want to start with the dynamic mic. Now, at the barn, we used an E604. Uh, it has a very compact form factor. It can handle the, the high uh, sound pressure levels coming off of the drum. Um, it has this integrated drum mount, uh, which allows the mic to be clipped to the rim of the drum. It's out of the way. It's less hardware. And we can really uh, fine-tune exactly where we want it aimed. All right, so let me take a closer uh, look at this. Uh, this uh, 604 comes with the clip, and I really wanted to point this out to you. Uh, the clip clips right on the edge of the drum. It has a serrated edge here. This uh, part of the clip goes beneath the rim, and then it snaps on to the rim. There's an isolation mount, as Andrew pointed out. It's flexible, it's resilient. The, uh, the microphone can be turned and it can be tilted, so it can be pointed uh, towards the center of the drum or towards the rim. And in fact, you can just simply disconnect that and you can go ahead and put this onto uh, a boom stand. So if you want to use this for the uh, hi-hat, so you have the same microphones all the way around. But it is a fantastic way to mic drums, make it clean, keep them uh, out of the way of the drummer. So I love these microphones, the, the 604, and it comes in the drum kit uh, that uh, we'll be talking about a little bit later. Now, we used the same, uh, the same microphone, the, the E604, on the toms as well. So we had a total of three of them. Now, to, to start, our positioning, uh, the, the snare, for example, uh, will start one to two inches off of the drum. We'll adjust the mic in at 45 degrees, um, just as, as a you know, good reference point here. Um, and then we'll angle the microphone for more tonal shaping. Uh, if we angle the, the microphone closer to the rim, we'll get a little bit more attack or crack. If it's more toward the center of the, of the, uh, the drum, we're going to get more of the fundamental sound. So starting at 45 degrees works quite well because it yields a pretty good balance, and then we can always uh, fine-tune it up later, fine-tune the positioning. Now, an excellent reason uh, to individually mic each drum is that you will have more control over each drum sound, uh, whether it's in EQ if needed or just, uh, just uh, fine nuances of the way that you're aiming it. Um, so we have another clip that we're going to show. We're gonna uh, we're gonna listen now to the same drum clip as before. Uh, we'll start with uh, our our simple minimalist three mic kit, uh, the two overheads and the and the uh, kick, and then we'll add in uh, we'll add in the additional three mics that we talked about. So uh, we'll play the first one for four bars or so, and then we'll add in after that. Let's listen. All right, so when we added in the uh, snare and the tom mics, did you hear how the toms just really were able to be laid right into the mix? Uh, it was fabulous. Uh, the, you had the presence of the toms. The snare had a little bit more snap, much different than the overheads. Uh, so we definitely like to go with that six microphone kit uh, and get mics right on those. That means also that I can EQ things uh, back at the board a little better as well. 
Uh, we didn't use the uh, dedicated hi-hat microphone because uh, we were getting enough uh, off the overheads and the cymbals, but uh, if you're not using overheads and you start close micing and go with even more mics, then you definitely have to have a microphone uh, on the hi-hats. So uh, one of the things that, that we're always concerned about is isolation. You know, with multiple microphones, you can have phase interference and isolation because you've got too many, or not too many, but you've got a lot of microphones. So, uh, Andrew, d did we have a, a lot of bleed coming in on that snare mic? Well, let's listen and find out. You know, uh, part, of, part of the key principles that we were talking about is use the, uh, use the directionality of the microphone to your advantage. Um, and the way, that, uh, the way that the snare, as we're going to demonstrate, was positioned is it actually was rejecting all the sound around it. But to demonstrate, we'll listen to, uh, to the kit. What we're going to do is we're going to play, uh, play the clip with all six mics. Then we're going to solo the snare drum, and then we'll go back to the full kit. All right, so that was a great demonstration of isolation uh, because the backside of the microphone was positioned uh, so it was uh, rejecting the hi-hat uh, and also the toms. You could uh, really hear the difference there that the snare, uh, it's almost like we turned off the recording until he hit the snare and it was there and then uh, boom back. But we didn't. It was just we isolated that microphone. So if you're going to use mic multiple microphones to mic a drum set, make sure you're using great microphones that have good isolation, excellent pattern control. And one of the things that separates out a great microphone from an okay microphone is the consistency of the pattern. In other words, if you have a directive microphone, a great microphone microphone will be directive at multiple frequencies, at a much wider range of frequencies, and a poor microphone will maybe be directive at the high frequencies and just you know, fall apart uh, as it gets to the mid-range. So uh, use good microphones when you're micing a drum kit and anytime you're using multiple microphones. Okay, so uh, let's see here. We've got uh, uh, um, one more kind of thing we wanted to mention on the drums, and that is the drums are a musical instrument. So just like any guitar, just like a piano gets tuned, then we want to make sure that the drums are tuned. Uh, drums that are out of tune do not sound musical. They have a horrible resonance to them. We want to make sure that the heads are tight and tuned. And that's what those little neurals are around the heads. Uh, we had a situation where we put in a very expensive sound system. It was the first Sunday. Uh, we had rehearsals on Saturday night, and we put up a nice drum kit uh, and uh, drum mics and couldn't get it to sound right. And we said, guys, you've got to tune these drums. And so we got them tuned up, uh, got them tightened up, and boy, they just snapped into place. So you can have the most expensive mics, you can have the great mic set up, but if you don't have your drums tuned musically, they'll sound horrible. So just like any other musical instrument, uh, keep your drums tuned and then use good mics and, and you'll end up with a great result.